Let's go. Oh, man. Level Quaid fist pump. Um, well, for me, I just remember ever since I was a freshman, coaches had always said, you know, you can always beat a team twice, but beating a team the third time is always going to be the hardest thing to do, no matter who it is. Uh, could be top of the league, could be bottom of the league. So for me, it was at like, uh, that was at like the front of my mind. I knew it was going to be harder than any of the other games, especially because, you know, it was for the championship and third game in four days or something like that. So um, I, I think that we were all on that next level of intensity, getting ready for this game. Yeah, I think we were all definitely locked in. Uh, just because um, being able to play Michigan already for a championship and getting to do mm -hmm. it for another championship, that's so big. And uh, we, I mean, they, I mean, not many times that happens. So we were just uh, looking forward to the opportunity of doing that. And uh, like KG said, we we're always ready for these games and always hyped for a Michigan game. Right. And to even express that to some of the younger guys like uh, Aaron and Gabe, you know, Gabe probably has a pretty good understanding of it being from Michigan. But some of the out of state guys don't get it as much as, you know, guys from Michigan. But we always do a good job of letting them know how big the rivalry actually is. And, you know, just how, what, what the what the difference in a rivalry game to a normal game is. As we're watching it here, it's back and forth early. This game was frenetic. Do you know these guys pretty well at this point? I mean, you guys have played them, obviously, quite a bit. What's your relationship guy like with the guys uh, in Maze and Blue? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty easy scout when you play uh, uh, team three times, and we just know all their plays. And as much as we walk through, especially in tournament time, I mean, we had all this oh, stuff down, and I, they had all our stuff down too. So it kind of just came down to, you know, who wanted it more, who's playing better, and uh, you know, right. you know, with the win. I, I mean, when was the first time we played them? It was like halfway through February and then ended up playing this late in March. So all three of those games were within a couple of weeks, too. Right. Sorry we had to open there, Kenny, with you getting glass. Yeah, I realized that. I'm talking about, you know, coming out with intensity and then what a way to start, huh? Quaid had a hell of a game, though. Yeah, Matt, did you know, like, when you were on, or was it something that you had to see one go down first to, to get in the rhythm? Uh, there, I mean, there, that was an emotional game. And when I saw, like, Kyle go down, too, and uh, just the way they were defending Cash, uh, I just uh, I had to be a lot more aggressive because they weren't – they were uh, get they're making him make that tough pass to the corner, which, uh, I mean, very few people can make. And Cash just, I mean, he was hitting me right on the money for it because they were taking a lot of stuff away, but that shot was there most of the game. Yeah, I remember we, like, at halftime had talked about how they were helping off the, the corner from uh, the pick and roll heavy. That's just such a hard pass to make, though, and especially, you know, Cash isn't the biggest guy. Right. How tricky was Teske to defend just as kind of a guy who can pick and pop? The thing is, he pops, but he does it in the paint, too, you know, rebounding and scoring. He does it real quietly, too. He never takes any real uh, uh, accolades or anything, but is one of the guys that gets it done quiet, double-double. So, looking back at you guys' careers and all the games you guys played against Michigan, where does this one rank? Number one for me. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say one or two. I mean, senior night of this one. So within yeah. two weeks of each other, you got one or two. Matt, what would be your number two, maybe number three? If you uh, go down the list. Uh, against Michigan? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this one for me, the Big Ten Championship with all the emotion of Kyle going down and everything. And then, I mean, of course, senior night for, is probably two. And then, um, I mean, any any time we beat them at Michigan, that's always like my like uh, my freshman year, Kenny's yeah redshirt freshman year. That was always that was a lot of fun. Jumping in the second half here, you guys were down eight, and Matt hit a big three, and then he just comes out on fire second half. Yeah. <laughs> He really took over after halftime, but that's the pass right there that we're talking about. 
and cause a crazy closeout for whoever's guarding in that corner. How many guys in the country think you can make that pass? <laughs> Maybe you can count on one hand. Less than five. Yeah. Yeah, hand. Mm. Ooh. I was in the building for that, and I did not think he was going to dunk that ball. His bounce is ridiculous. Yeah. He's one of those guys that just, like, continues to go up. Gabe, too, though. Did you guys ever get put on any posters in practice? Or, or did you guys make any posters in practice? I'd say I probably took part in both of those a little more than Quaid. <laughs> Quaid got some sneaky bounce, though. You saw it in the Duke game. How many dunks do you have in your career, Matt? Probably oh. just in five. Let's go. Oh, man. Level Quaid fist pump. How often do you get fired up like that in a game? A lot, especially when we played Michigan. Hell yeah. Look at the pass, man. That's a crazy pass. Wow. Look at Arnie. Yes, sir. You touched on it. Seeing him go down, what did that do for your team in this game? So it, it ignited us for sure. Um, you saw, like, the emotion on everybody's face. Coaches uh, even crying. And, you know, we, we, always, we feel for Arnie when he gets hurt because he's been through so much and had so many injuries. So... Right, but you feel for anyone too, though. It's exactly. as your brother, you know what I'm saying? The right. reason you do this is for the man next to you. Yeah, Quinn. That's a big time shot right there. You guys play in a bunch of different Big Ten tournament sites from India to New York, D.C., and then finally here in Chicago. How would you say the atmosphere is compared? And do you have a favorite? I think always the Big Ten fans in general show out, but Michigan State, Michigan, you know, we got great crowds that always travel, and especially in, you know, D.C., we got a great following. Chicago, we got a bunch of alumni. It's everywhere we go. I've had great experiences with the fans. Yeah, literally everywhere. I mean, we were in Boston one year, and there was a ton. <laughs> Code uh, Dallas. To uh, go watch that the Michigan State football game that one time there was a ton for the that Cotton Bowl thing. Right, they're just everywhere. Saw Gabe Brown, Marcus on the bench. How goofy were those guys? Because when I saw you guys in the locker room, even at the Final Four, like those guys were clowning nonstop. So how how funny were those guys for the team? <laughs> those gotta be two of the funniest teammates I had. Uh, like single-handedly, but then you get them together. They're like a package deal. It's <laughs> they just feed off each other. <laughs> right. I don't know. Zell and Brynn might, might be funnier than them. Oh, yeah. That was a good combo. <laughs> Huge shot right here. That's a foul, bro. Yeah. Uh oh, I just got him fucking ball. Great concentration, great finish. He won't give it up, I don't think. Winston, they'll try and get in the lane and be creative. Man, just put Cat. Somehow it goes. Like Teske at the rim a little bit, though. Brass take us into the paint. Trying to tie it, comes up short. It'll stay at this end. They're going to look at it, though. Cool guy. Check the time as well. The crazy thing is, I think we were actually trying to foul there, so they didn't. Yeah, we were. Yeah, and he oh. tried to get the shot with the foul. They didn't even call the foul or yeah. give him. <laughs> I remember that. Kenny, how much pressure is on you here? I just need one free throw out of two, so it's not like. Yeah, I don't think I was really that pressured at that point. I mean, how much time was on the clock? Even? Three seconds? No, we, we knew. Two seconds? Yeah. Yeah, no. All smiles at that point. 
That was an emotional day. I still can't believe that they do year after year they do the Big Ten tournament like the last day ending on the selection show. Right. It doesn't even matter if you win it, it feels like. Right. I mean, we were on the floor at that game looking up, seeing that we played whoever we played and what the brackets looked like. Like the committee's already got their mind made up before they even finished yeah. the game. They put it out while we were on the floor. Come on, man. At least sometimes you're actually, like, backstage watching it on the TV or something. Unreal. You mentioned you were trying to foul that last play, and you saw how it played out. Um, is that something that Izzo would normally do up three? Is go for, you know, is take a risk there and try and foul? Or how did the strategy play into uh, that situation? I don't know. I don't even think, uh, you know, I think it might have been DJ that wanted it. I don't know how it happened, but, you know, I've seen him where often we kind of just defend it out and other times where you foul, um, you never know, man. You got to get a feel for the game. Yeah, it's just like Kenny said, it kind of just depends how the game's going and what the coaches are feeling and what the players are comfortable with. And, I mean, we were comfortable with it, but, I mean, it played out. It played out in our hand, though. Right. Kenny, you said it was an emotional day. Before we wrap up and and uh, move on to some more clips here, can you just kind of put a bow on this game and and what it feels like, you know, watching it again a year plus later, having moved on from college basketball. And, and Matt, if you could add on to that as well. I mean, yeah, for me, it's just the rivalry was, you know, deep inside me. It's it's it for me so. To see it every time Michigan goes down to Michigan State, love to see it. But to relive that and like uh, McQuaid said with Arnie going down and just the emotions of the championship, the third time beating him, everything like that. It was just such a special day for all of us. And you can see it on our faces uh, still with the video paused. It was, it was just really a magical way to kind of wrap up that tournament. Yeah, yeah I mean, like it was just, so emotional and to beat them three times like and they got us two, they got us two times last year so we we were coming for blood this year and we wanted it so yeah. bad I mean the crazy thing was weren't we like down a combined 30 some points at all three games like and we came back in every game each one was a fight it was you know it was kind of just how Michigan State has always been and uh wow just still got all the all the goosebumps of it happening like it was yesterday yeah, I mean, we, we, we earned them for sure. Matt, I thought I saw you. Did you, like, collapse to the ground there? Or, or what happened there at the end? I thought I saw a clip. <laughs> yeah. Let me check it out. Rewind a little bit. I was laughing at Marky. We were talking about Gabe and Marky earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, everybody's reactions. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just – I don't even remember, man. I was just, like, I couldn't believe it, you know. Another Big Ten championship. <laughs> Beat your rival. I was, like, kind of just taking it all in. Legs were kind of tired, too. <laughs> that's that's the third game in to... four days, man. Sometimes, you you know, it's just time to relax. <laughs> I was not ready to dance. We handled it good. We take, we take every game of the tournament one game at a time. And, I mean, we knew we were going to eventually have to play them. But, yeah. uh... We had a good great we had a great game plan. We all executed it and I mean we just like we all handled it very good. Everybody did their part and that was the main thing. Right, it really was a whole team de team deal and you know three of those guys on their team got a lot of praise but you know we 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 tried to play our game plan to take one or two of them out and just you know rely on the rest of the guys beating us and I think mm. once uh once everyone was uh, on board, especially in the second half, we really just got it rolling and, and uh, kind of steamrolled them out on his head. <laughs> Look at the sprint back on defense too, though. I was like, no. I had a good lead pass. I took, I got my stuff swatted like a couple of plays before, and I was like, I can't go up weak. So I just said, uh, F it. I'm going to dunk it or try and dunk it. Just honestly, anytime you see someone who doesn't dunk that often get up, like even in practice, that's like, you know, a jolt to the energy. But in a game like this, it's just it makes you feel that much more 
locked in. Like you could see him sprint back on defense. We're all ready for the next play. You know, the energy transforms into a, a focus, and you guys just continue to heighten that. Drove to baseline and <laughs> saw a big come, and I just adjusted my body. And then I tried to find the rim as quick as I could and get the ball in. The way he hit me, it turned my body, but it, it, it like, it like shifted my body to a weird angle to where I could find the rim and I could flick it up and give it a good chance to go in. I'm not going to say it was 100% skill, but. Ah, come on, Quay, take, take ownership. That's a lay package right there. Yeah, I should, I should. No yeah. foul. Nope. <laughs> you see, you see X laughing. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to throw him the lob right here, too. <laughs> they were going to go back to the lob to him. And it happened. Sorry, X. Like I said before, it was like uh, when I caught it, you know, all year, everyone's been telling me, be ready to shoot. You know, we got to have you shoot the ball. Even Quaid, you know, guys on the team, coaches, all that. And uh, yeah, when I caught it there, like I said, he had blocked probably two or three of my shots throughout the game. So... I was looking to see how far away he was and it, it was just too far. And, you know, as soon as I had like, like rose up into the shot, I really couldn't see much cause his hand was there. But as soon as I let it go, I knew it was going down. It was like the best feeling shot you could have. And, you know, as he had passed over, I kind of just saw it go through the bottom of the net. And then it was like a, just like crazy feeling at the end. But again, like McQuaid, I was like, we gotta get a stop. I kind of locked back in and, you know, we were on to the next play. I was running. You see me running back, not even going to the boards. <laughs> I got my hands up before it's even going in. Nothing but net, man. That was crazy. Yeah, I never thought it would be, you know, especially without sports this year. <laughs> I think it's getting remembered a little more, but I never thought it would be like a shot that would be remembered for, you know, it's hard to put your mind around that. Wow. You know, it feels like it was forever ago, but like I can remember like it was yesterday. You know, you fight for your brother um, more than anything because they go through it with you every single day. And especially at Michigan State, there's there's no family closer than us. And that was me and, me and McQuaid had sat down before the season even started. I think this was like May of the year before. And, you know, we had talked about that, talked about how Michigan beat us the year before wanting to get uh, kind of revenge on them, a Big Ten tournament, all this stuff. We had talked about it that long ago. And, you know, for as long as the season had took all the way through the last game, we fought for each other. And, you know, beautiful things happen when you guys got that brotherhood and, and really, really want to do it for each other. We had practice the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, it was cool. We got – we got uh, – Bus ride was fun. Plane ride was fun. We were playing the fight. Sorry, but I was just having a good time holding the net, holding the trophy on the plane. Then we get to Lansing, and there's a big gathering at the Braz that's unforgettable. A lot of people there. That was awesome. Yeah. I don't know, man. For me, I think the thing that sticks out most out of all that stuff, like it was cool with all the people on the bus. You know, we on the plane, we had the cheerleaders and all that, but like in the locker room right after the game, before oh, the media yeah. came in, like or after I think they had left either. Whenever it was just like us guys and the squad and everything, you know, just being in that locker room and, and everyone just, we, we had made something special this year. You know, not done, but what we had talked about, we got it. And it was just a, a real like bonding moment for everyone in there. Coaches, uh, you know, Delhi, <laughs> everybody, the managers.